Welcome to Real Life Mentoring, where we explore real life issues to help you make an authentic difference in the world. Well, hi, it's Chris and Christina. We're back with Real Life Mentoring Podcast. Today, we've got a guest. He's been on before. We're going to be talking to Nate Brewer out of Vienna, Austria. We, You have heard us say time and time again that we focus on a holistic approach to mentoring, focusing on the six areas. So Chris, what are those six areas? They are spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, relational, and professional or educational, depending where you are in life. And we, right. we, we, yeah, we, we care about all six areas because they do impact one another. Right. So today, Nate, we're going to focus in on one of our six areas that we say is the professional education piece. We're going to be interviewing him on The Working Genius. Chris, take it away. Yeah, you know, Nate, you sent us this, this information, so I'll just read it to the, the audience. It said, we spend the majority of our waking hours working. Some types of work energize you, others frustrate you and burn you out. Maybe you're frustrated with what you do at work. Maybe you don't know what your genius is, your superpowers are. Maybe your meetings suck, it says. Maybe your team doesn't work well together. Maybe you just like learning new things. Whatever the trigger, you are welcome to join us for this podcast series called The Six Types of the Working Genius and Understanding Your Gifts, Your Frustrations, and Your Team. And so, Nate, we're going to just kick it off and, and let you introduce yourself. And thank you for doing this with us today. My pleasure. It's good to be here with you guys again. Uh, one of the things you say is that the working genius is the fastest way to find out what kind of work brings you join energy and the simplest way to maximize your team's productivity. So let's start, Nate. Why don't you just unpack what is working genius? Yeah, this is a, a fascinating concept, fascinating model that has been around just four years. So it's relatively new, created in 2020. And I would like to call it a productivity tool with a personality touch. Okay. So the creators actually like say it's a, it's a mixed bag. It's 80% productivity and 20% uh, personality profile. And we'll get into that a little bit deeper later. But um, as the name implies, the six types of working genius. Working, so it applies directly to your work, to your professional life. Uh, identifying what type of work brings you energy and joy and therefore fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And genius, that term they use, applies to the natural talent, the natural gift you have, something you're naturally gifted at. And there's six types of genius, which we're going to get into on this podcast. They're if you picture like interlocking gears at the time of our podcast recording, the Olympics are going on. So if you picture those like five interlocking Olympic rings, add a sixth at the end, we have six types of working genius. And they're like interlocking gears that are interrelated because it's about uh, how do you collaborate best as a team at work. So as I said, it's relatively new. There's about 1 million assessments, though, that have been taken wow. since 2020. Uh, and it's used in, it's been used in every imaginable industry from zookeepers to tech professionals to big corporations to churches to nonprofits. So anywhere there's people, which is most professional atmospheres, this model and productivity tool is applicable. Okay, where does it come uh, from and what's the yeah. background on this? So the author and creator of The Six Types of Working Genius is Patrick Lencioni. And this name might ring a bell for some of you who are in the business world. For almost 30 years, he has been working with teams to through his consulting group called The Table Group to help teams become uh, more effective, more productive, more cohesive, healthy. In fact, they call themselves the organizational health people. And their big bet or one of his books that he's written called The Advantage is that organizational health is going to be the key advantage for organizations moving forward in the future. Are the Is the company culture healthy? So he's written 13 best-selling books. A lot of people have heard of Five Dysfunctions of a Team or Death by Meetings or The Advantage or The Ideal Team Player. Those are some of his most popular books. And the latest one is The Six Types of Working Genius. So Patrick Lencioni is the author and creator. And in 2020, at his own consulting firm, he began to question why he occasionally became so frustrated 
in his work and why he occasionally felt really drained in some of the tasks he was doing. And in the process, he began brainstorming with his senior leadership team and in the process of chewing on this, Working Genius was born, figuring out which types of work and which types of tasks brought him and the others on his team joy and energy, and then which types of activities drained them and, and even led to burnout. So since that time, since it was born 20, 24 years ago, uh, it's helped hundreds of thousands of individuals and teams discover their gifts and even transform their work and their workflow. Yeah, good. Well, let's just jump right into the six. Do you mind telling us what they are and then giving us a, a brief overview of, of what each one is? Sure. And as I describe these, you could be thinking as a listener, is this me? Does this yeah. resonate with me? So these these are the six types of working genius. And this identifies uh, people that are naturally gifted and derive joy and energy from this type of activity. So the acronym for these six spells out widget, W-I-D-G-E-T, widget. So W stands for wonder. Wonder is uh, these people are naturally gifted and drive energy and joy from identifying the need for change. So wonder, wonders, could there be a better way? Mm. Could we improve mm -hmm. this? They ask big picture question. They identify the needs for change or improvement. Secondly, invention responds to that need and generates ideas and solutions, innovative ideas and solutions to solve that need. I'm just giving a very short overview, right. but just to give all of the listeners some framework for this, D stands for discernment. And this assess, assesses the workability or the viability of the idea or the solution, even refines them to make it better. And as a response to that, once the team has landed on the idea or the product or the service, you have galvanizing, which is the activity of rallying and inspiring people to, to push them forward to action. Fifthly, you have enablement. And this genius, these people are naturally gifted at, drive energy and joy from helping people, from supporting and assisting this idea, bringing it to, to fruition. And last but not least, tenacity brings things across the finish line. Very achievement focused. Did we hit this, the outcome that we were looking for? And did we bring the product to market or have we launched the service? Um, have we accomplished things according to the standards? So it's very achievement and outcome focused. As I said, those, you probably resonated with one or even two of those, because as it turns out, people have two working geniuses, two, what we like to call working competencies, and two, working frustrations, things that drain your energy, frustrate you. Okay. So we love coffee on this call. I'll give you a, a short analogy of coffee. I hope you guys have had your coffee this right. morning. Well, you are seven <laughs> hours ahead of us. so we're yeah. having <laughs> I've had a iced caramel latte in the morning at a coffee shop. That was really good. <laughs> and uh, after lunch, I had a, a ristretto. And then just before this podcast, I had an espresso. Maybe that's too much, but I enjoyed <laughs> no, it. Never. <laughs> Is that tenacity? <laughs> it could be. It could be. So uh, thinking of coffee, when you make coffee in the morning, yeah. If you pour your coffee into a thermos, it's going to stay hot for a long time, right? It's going to retain that heat and that energy. And that correlates to working geniuses. These are activities that you could do for a long time because you get energy from them. You could do them easily for, for a long period of time. They don't drain you. In fact, they retain your energy, even give you energy. Now, secondly, if you poured coffee into a normal mug, what happens after some minutes or even some hours? The heat dissipates, the energy dissipates, okay. and eventually it would get cold. So this parallels the working competencies. These are activities that you can do for a limited amount of time. It will bring you some joy, some energy. You're also fairly competent at them. That's why they're called working competencies. But they don't bring you as much joy and energy as the geniuses. Thirdly, the working frustrations is like 
pouring coffee into a mug that has holes in the bottom <laughs> yeah. and it just drains out. Okay. And so the coffee is barely even there. It just drains. The, the heat is drained out. The energy is drained out. And these are the type of activities that really frustrate us or drain us. And if we do them longer term, they will eventually even lead to burnout. Gosh, that makes sense. I'm such a visual learner. So that like totally, I totally get that. But I I could argue that maybe I have more than two of <laughs> the You're trainers. You're just an all-around genius, Christine. <laughs> You're just an all-around genius. Well, okay. hey, why is it important to realize this? And what are the implications for your own profession, but then working as a team? Very good question. There's a n- number of different outcomes or benefits from this model. The first and most obvious is it really identifies your joy and your energy. And so it maximizes your joy and your energy at work. And everyone knows that if you are happy at work, you are more fulfilled and you're more mm-hmm. productive even as well. So if you are a business team leader, you your employees' morale is going to be boosted. The, whole, the entire team spirit, team morale is going to be boosted because your employees are going to be happy at work, maximizing their joy and energy and fulfillment at work. Sure. Well, I've always enjoyed uh, personality assessments and anything to help me better understand myself. I say I've enjoyed that. Sometimes I don't like seeing, you know, my weaknesses, but we all have them. So how does this differ from other tools, would you say? Yeah, let me uh, jump back real quick to a couple of the benefits and outcomes. Okay. I think that's just the simplest surface level is it it does identify your your joy and your, and your energy, but it really also helps us appreciate one another better. Mm. Because you understand where someone else's weakness, as you just said, is actually your strength, or on the flip side, one of your weaknesses, teammate strength. So you appreciate someone who's able to do something well that you're very weak in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it also really gives a, a very simple workflow. So the one that's one of the USPs. It provides a simple and optimized workflow. So every type of job goes through these six types of working genius, right? You think about it. Say you want to start a podcast. You have to ask the big question at the beginning, identify the need for change. Huh? We're not reaching as many people as we could reach. Let's start a pod. Should we, should we start a podcast? What type of podcast? These are the big questions that start with wonder. And then you, with the invention, you generate ideas and solutions. Okay, let's start a podcast and we can reach more people with mentoring. And you then discern what type of podcast and what type of guests and all these types of of questions. So it goes through a whole workflow from wonder, identifying the need for change, all the way to tenacity, uh, completing the project successfully. So it gives us a workflow. That's one of the big benefits of this model. And it, in the end, because we have a simplified workflow and everybody is in their sweet spot, it increases productivity. And tell me what business team leader doesn't want to increase productivity sure. their team mm-hmm. and their business. So there are a lot of benefits and outcomes to this. Those are the three biggest, I would say. You know, Nate, we lead this mentoring nonprofit called Fahrenheit Real Life Mentoring. And I'm thinking we're talking about right now, we need to uh, make adjustments on our board, board of directors. Mm-hmm. I can see where this could be really helpful in having every every member go through, take this assessment. Definitely. With any team, to steal the verbiage of Jim Collins, it gets the right people on the bus and gets people in the right seat in the bus. So you you might have in your nonprofit or in your business team, people that are very valuable in your team, but they're in the wrong seat. And so just by moving them to a different role, a different position can make a big impact in their life and, and increase morale and productivity for the team. So it builds effective and healthy teams is the big picture goal. We prepared some questions ahead of time. This is just a thought that's not on what we prepared, but Nate, if I was looking at my organization and thought, okay, I want to give everybody this assessment so that the next project we have coming down the pike, I want to put everybody in their sweet spot. What Mm -hmm. happens when there's not somebody for a task that is their sweet spot? Then you just you use somebody's competency, maybe they can do that. They're, that's not their genius, but they can do that to maybe get this project through. Is that a real simplistic um, explanation of what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we're going to dive more into teams as a little sneak peek 
on right. the third episode. So we'll get into that more quickly. But that's one of the most frequently asked questions is what if we have a gap on our team? Let's say just for simplicity's sake, we have only five people. And so there's six geniuses that we're missing one. What do we do? And what you hinted at is, yeah, you can use a competency. Mm -hmm. That's not an ideal long-term solution, but okay. someone has one of those geniuses as a competency. Secondly, you can hire from the outside or the inside, hire from a different department maybe. And this really actually is also a, ben a benefit of this tool is also improves hiring. Because if you need a specific task done, you can have this working genius assessment give you extreme clarity on is this individual going to match the task and the activities, the type of work that we need done. So it improves sure. how you can hire. And thirdly, uh, you can kind of bundle the team's collective genius to fill that gap. That's great. Uh, Chris, let's go back to your question about what sets this apart from the personality test or productivity tool. Okay. Yeah, there's maybe, a maybe lot you, out there, you right? Some, you, you answered some of that. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different personality tests and productivity tools out there, right? If you think of DISC, Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, Lifts, Clifton Strengths Finder are, are just a few. Have you guys taken any of those? I think all of those. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Strength Finders so, was my latest, yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I've taken that one, but yes, I've taken various ones over the years. What I like about what I see about this one so far, this gives me energy. This mm -hmm. other aspect, I'm fairly confident and I can do it for a short amount of time. But if I use too much of my time doing that, then it's going to go to frustration. And there'll be some things that just totally frustrate me. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you nailed one of the USPs from this tool or what differentiates itself from those others is this is specifically focused on joy and energy. And it is very simple. That's a second USP. Um, very simple. So if you think of the Myers-Briggs, there's 16 different types. Right. Okay? And after you finally figure out, am I an I-E-S-T-P-J, that you're, you're four letters. Right. Uh, I'm an E-S-T-P. For mm -hmm. those of you are Myers-Briggs uh, enthusiasts, you'll know right away what that means. It's Nickname is the entrepreneur, and it tells you a lot about yourself, and it tells you a lot about someone else. So there's benefits to that. Right. But with this example, just to use Myers-Briggs as an example, there's 16 different types, and it takes a while to understand your own type, and then 15 other types, and then it's a big bridge to try to figure out how does this actually apply to my work in the day-to-day. -day. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the third USP for Working Genius is it's simple joy and energy. And then third, it's a direct application to work. So it's it's the only tool of its kind, to my knowledge, that is applied directly to work. Most personality instruments like Myers-Briggs help people understand better how they're wired, but they fail to explain how that fits together with others in the process of work. You, As an individual, you walk away with a greater understanding of the type of work that makes you thrive personally, but it also provides teams with a better way to work together. Right. Well, as a spoiler alert, Chris and I took the assessment and podcast number two, we're going to dive into that. But what I love taking the assessment was after I got my results, it was a no brainer. Oh, of course, that gives me joy because those other assessments, that's maybe how I'm going to complete it. But it was so helpful to go, oh, this is why this piece of who I am, this is why this is my genius. And this is why this is my frustration, given my personality. It was like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. I've never had something be so aha uh -huh, in the workplace. This is mm -hmm. how I complete my profession, or this is how I operate in my family. When we all go on vacation, we all have tasks to do. Yes, of course, yes. this is why I do this. Uh, this, okay. this was the missing piece. This was great. I'm, in fact, I'm going to have all my family do this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I met with a guy yesterday and he asked me, Chris, so how, how do you feel about your work? And yesterday I was very encouraged. I had, I realized I wasn't connecting it with this assessment, even though I had just taken it about two hours before I met with this guy and he asked me that question and I was very positive about it, but you know why? Because the last few days I've been working more in my area of energy. Had he asked me that maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago before vacation, and I was trying to just get through stuff, you know, check off list, I would not have been as positive about my work because I was I was either in either in the 
fairly competent area or a frustration mode. Yeah. And to be fair, we can't always avoid those tasks that are in our frustrations, especially if we have um, a boss that asks us to do a certain activity or task in that area. But through healthy communication, you can communicate to your team leader, to your boss, to a board, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be as effective or productive for your team or for your organization if I'm constantly doing these tasks. You would do better to put me in this area or this role or give me more of these type of tasks. And that brings a lot of awareness uh, to, to the individual, to the boss, and to the team. You know, we've had uh, Todd Benson, who does uh, giant leadership tools, and one of the things that he referred to is the 70-30 approach. I think Jeremy Kubitschek in Giant, he he talks about this, that 70% of your time should be doing those things that are life-giving. And those you'll know they're life-giving because they're in your sweet spot. 30% mm-hmm. is just the stuff that has to be done. I love that concept. But this gives me handlebars to go. So this is what I should be doing for my yes. 70%. Yes. So any leader types who are listening and you're familiar with Giant, this is what he's talking about. But this tool specifically gives you handlebars to go, okay, this is my 70%. And an added maybe correlation for those of you who are familiar with Giant's model, the five voices, there's some very strong correlation between, for example, the pioneer Mm-hmm. And the genius of invention. There's right. a very strong correlation between the five voice nurturer and the working genius enablement. Makes sense. So they don't all match up perfectly, <clears throat> but there's some very strong correlations with those five voices from giant tool and the six types of working genius. Just on a practical side, I, I want to be more deliberate about when I schedule my my work week, is I, I we basically work for ourselves. And so I put my my days together. I need to be very deliberate about spacing it out instead of having maybe one or two whole days at the uh, back to back where it's out of my frustration area. It's not where I get energy because I could get discouraged earlier in the week if I mm-hmm. that's all I get it done mm-hmm. work as opposed to going, you know, this is where my energy area is. This is where I'm I'm pretty confident. I need to balance those throughout my week. And I haven't done that so well at times. Uh, you point out another great application, Chris, even just scheduling individual workflow for the day and for the week, scheduling areas where you're going to have high energy and where you're going to have low energy to complete the most effective work during that time of the day that corresponds to your genius. I love this. Like we alluded to earlier, this is a three-part series. We are leaving you on a cliffhanger where next time we will talk specifically about. But for the listener who's going, oh my gosh, this is so intriguing. Tell us how they can find out about you and you do have a special offer. So do you mind running down that information for us, Nate? Sure. Yeah. If you say, you know, this is intriguing for me, I see the value of it. I'm convinced of it. Uh, I wanted to offer a a bonus for the listeners of the Fahrenheit Mentoring Podcast, $10 off a working genius assessment and online coaching, 50 minutes. That means it will be $40 instead of $50. So that you can find on my website, workinggenius.eu, which I think Chris and Christina will post in the podcast description or or, uh, transcript. So uh, that's one option. And the, the second option is just, hey, I, I would like to explore more. You've piqued my interest. I want to explore more. And if you go on my website, there's links to podcasts from uh, The Working Genius and resources, free resources for teams. So you can just explore more on the website as well. Nate, we want to thank you for this. And we look forward to the other episodes where we're going to learn much more about The Working Genius with you. Thanks for having me. It was fun to to reconnect and to dive into this model. Yeah, so I'm just going to close this out again, thanking you, Nate, for this is part one of a three part series where we're going to dive into the working genius. And in the transcript, you'll be able to find out exactly how to take advantage of the generous offer that Nate is giving us. And so, as always, if this has been helpful f- to you, if you're a part of a team and you're like, oh my word, we need to get a hold of this. Uh, share this podcast, sign up your whole team um, and take advantage of this. So as always, we want to list. Uh, thank you for listening to Real Life Mentoring Podcast. Mm-hmm.